Hello audience, I am going to uh, show you how to create a virtual machine uh, using VirtualBox. I got my Windows XP disk in here, 32-bit, and I'm screen capturing here. I'm using Linux Mint 15, the latest version of Linux Mint. Alright, now as the disk is going to load, and I finally created a Steam account last night. Alright, now we're going to run VirtualBox here. Uh, yeah, I got a Windows 7 um, on there. I made a video about it. I haven't uploaded it yet at this time. And it's 10.57 p.m. on uh, Saturday, September 14th of 2013. So I got... Uh, yeah, um. <laughs> and Windows XP. Yeah, we're going to do um, Windows XP. You can go all the way back to Windows 3.1 with this, but I'm going to create one for Windows XP. Now, how much RAM? Um, the minimum practical is like I don't know, 192 megs of RAM. I'm going to give this XP machine. Um, we're going to make it a good one. We're going to give it 2 gigs of RAM. Um, we're going to create a virtual hard drive. Um, virtual hard disk, I guess. Uh, dynamically allocated, yeah. Um, we're going to give it... We're just probably going to use it for gaming a little bit. We'll give it... Um, we'll give it about 70... Yeah, around 75 gig. Should be enough. Create that. All right, now we're going to take our settings. And I haven't played around with uh, VirtualBox very much. Uh, I've done it a little bit here and there. Uh, drag and drop, uh, bidirectional. Yeah, I guess we'll just do that. Share clipboard, bidirectional. All right. Um, all right, system. Yeah, we'll let it access the network. Let it have a floppy disk. Chipset. I guess we'll leave that one. Uh, uh, you know, I don't even know what that is. Processor. Generally, Windows XP machines only have one processor, even though XP machine, you know, XP can handle two processors. <clears throat> and we'll do physical address extension. Execution cap, we'll only let it go. Um, We'll get it at 90% because I mean my processor is a 3. Point, uh, 3.8 gigahertz processor. All right. Now I got six cores, but um, XP won't recognize any more than two. So. Now nah, we'll give it one processor core. And um, 
since Windows XP typically ran on uh, single core systems anyway. Video memory, we're going to enable 3D and 2D acceleration. We'll give it a, um, since we're going to use it for gaming, we'll give it a decent, well, we'll give it a decent graphics card. Oh, 120 meg, huh? Um, remote display, no, we're not doing that. Storage. Um, yeah. Um, audio, yeah, we'll just. We'll leave it on that network. Serial ports. No, I don't think we'll need them. USB, yeah. Oh, I need that extension pack. I really do. Oh, well. Alright. Um, now I think we're. Um, we got us a pretty good Windows XP machine here. I mean, I can make it a dual core and uh, <clears throat> it'd run even better so um, we'll, st we'll start it up now and then we'll uh, see here we're going to select boot device now enable load file um, reset the the virtual computer, the virtual machine. Uh, here we go. C. Couldn't read from boot medium. That's dumb. But it can. There, it should be able to. I got a disk in the drive. Mm, continue booting. No. Hmm, it's a problem. SPI shut down, all right. Hmm, okay, power off the machine. All right, now what I'm going to do is um, try to start one as um, Windows 98, second edition. Oh, this disk is all scratched up. Um, hmm. Is there any other Windows 98 disks I got over here in the stack? Um, this one's in better condition. No, <laughs> it's not. Um, well, luckily these are CDs, and the data size on them is not as small as DVDs or especially Blu-ray. <clears throat> we'll just create a new virtual machine. Uh, type is Windows 98. memory we're going to give it. Um, we're going to do 256. Okay. Create a virtual disk drive now. Dynamically allocated. Well, gig will be okay for that. Uh, let's get our settings. Advanced shared clipboard by directional and by directional. Um, system. No, we'll give it network also. Um, processor. One CPU, definitely. 
execution cap 90% we're gonna only let it use 90% of our um, real uh, processor speed acceleration yeah um, display we're gonna give it a um, I'm gonna give it a 64 meg graphics card. That'll be pretty good. Storage uh, attributes. Audio sound blaster 16. Ah, it expects. Uh, Then we're going to start the virtual machine. Um, we're going to select startup disk, yes. There we go. Boot from CD ROM. Start Windows. Start Windows 98 setup. All right. Set up, enter, configure, unallocated. Enable large disk support. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. Man, I haven't seen this kind of screen in a while, this kind of stuff displayed. Now, Windows 98 will only recognize one processor core or one processor thread. Basically, it's a single processing type of uh, operating system. And um, so there's no point in allocating more than one processor core, although I have six in this machine. <clears throat> uh, since I have a AMD FX 6200. It's a 3.8 gigahertz hexacore. Has six processor cores. And um, anyway, we're only letting it have 90% of that 3.8 gigahertz clock speed. It should run fast. I mean, really, I could cut that thing down to 50% of uh, CPU uh, execution cap. And it would probably run really fast. Because then it would be. Um, It'd be the equivalent of a 1.9 gigahertz. And, I mean, Windows 98, it ran, like, really fast. Like, really fast on a 1.8 gigahertz. Installed it. it. All right, there we go. All right. Oh, I miss this stuff. Oh man. Oh gosh, yeah, this brings back memory. Now keep in mind, I'm installing Windows 98 to a virtual machine. Yeah, that. Oh man, this brings back memories. Oh man. 
I did like Windows 3.1 to, to some extent. I was pretty comfortable with that. Um, I was comfortable with um, with Windows 98. Um, Uh, that's why I stay with it for a while. The ones I'm the most comfortable with, I stay with for a while. Um, XP was I didn't stay with it for a whole long time. Um, but I did with 2000. Not even got the scroll wheel. Windows scripting host right there that um, that enabled the Melissa virus. Um, I um, I noticed that all you had to do was view the source code. I've noticed this on my own system. Just view the source code to um, the Melissa or I love you virus. Just view it in Notepad, and then it, it immediately. Just load it up in Notepad and view the source code, and it instantly triggers the antivirus. You know, like like you know, you got an antivirus running, and it triggers it uh, because it recognizes um, work group. The mob. Pet one, okay, and the mob, okay. Regional settings. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I'm in the United States. Start copying files. <clears throat> Relax while Windows 98 installs on your computer during this automated and, and, and some of the enhancements to Windows 98. If you now, this is Windows 98 second edition that I'm installing. Wow, it's expecting to take 26 minutes. I bet you it won't even take that long. Nope, well, took a minute off of that. Windows just got better. Windows 98 helps you get the most out of your computer, making it the easiest to use, more reliable, faster, and more entertaining. The easiest to use, well, that's interesting because, you know, I always see these books out on the market, you know, like everywhere that they sell books that are new. And whenever they sell computer books, they always got books to help. Most of the books are there to teach you how to use Windows. Well, if Windows is so easy, then it should be intuitive. You shouldn't even have to need to read a book about how to use it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have to, you know, take some kind of college course. And I've seen technical schools and colleges offer courses about how to use, you know, Microsoft Outlook and Internet Explorer and Microsoft Word and all that. I mean, if Microsoft really makes the 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 so, you know, if they have, if they're the industry leader in making easy to use software, then it should just be an intuitive user interface that you don't that you don't have to be taught how to use. You should just be able to figure it out. But Microsoft is not the easiest to use. Um, I mean, I like Linux. That's what I'm using. Oh yeah, you see the the transparencies come up. You can see the network thing in the background. You can see in the background here the uh, Windows. Um, the, yeah, the, the the virtual box thing there in the background. See the file copy process and all that. Meet face to face, man. Keep in mind, this, this Windows 98 Second Edition came out in 1999. 
Windows 98 came out in 1998, of course. So, I mean, you're looking at software that's 14 to 15 years old. This was the computer desktop experience for the typical computer user 15 years ago. Oh, it brings back memories. Windows 98 helps you uh, get top-notch performance without adding new hardware. Programs start and run faster. <clears throat> More storage space. Gain extra disk space by converting your hard disk to the FAT32 file system. This file system in order is okay. Uh, increased dependability. Really? Really? With hundreds of, of enhancements and new... Uh, a new suite of wizards and smart tools. Windows 98 helps you keep your computer running smoothly. So why is there like this, this huge industry of like security software and performance and reliability software such as Norton System Works, Norton Crash Guard, and all this stuff that's only for Microsoft Windows? I mean, riddle me that, Batman. Look at that, it still says, look at this counter, it's, it's wrong. I mean, only it says only two minutes, okay, three minutes of elapsed or remaining time have been taken off, but yet yeah, we're more than halfway through the install process. Uh, converging real-time two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics, digital video and audio, and the, inter uh, and the internet. Windows 98 redefines the, the, the computer as the entertainment, as an inter entertainment platform. Games are more giving yet yeah, DirectX, and the reason why they had to sell you on DirectX is because if Microsoft did not create DirectX, then like then computer game makers, they were going to keep writing everything for MS DOS indefinitely because they had they had direct hardware access, and then you know they could just write it to be as powerful as whatever hardware was in your system. And that's why you know DirectX. Uh, uh, debuted in 1994 or 1995 and that's why computer games as late as 1997 and 1998 still uh, were written to run in MS-DOS without DirectX and just used you know the, the direct hardware access that MS-DOS uh, enabled Wow, only took four minutes off that time, and yet it now it's one hundred percent install process. Right. Oh, here's here's a restart. You know, with Linux, you only got to restart once, but with Windows, like I know I noticed on uh, Windows two thousand, you can restart as much as five times during the install process. All right, my user information. All right, I am. Um, no, I'm going to be Johannes McGillicuddy. <laughs> Johannes McGillicuddy, actually. And I work for, um, oh, um, what was it? What was the name of that? Um, Tubal Bantix Mega Systems. <laughs> Tubal Bantix. Yeah, I accept the agreement. <clears throat> All right. Now you gotta enter your key. Yeah, you gotta put in your product key. Uh, this was annoying. Now a friend of mine had his uh, Windows 95 product key uh, memorized. He had installed Windows 95 on this one computer. He had a computer that had like a faulty hard drive or some kind of defect in the hard drive. And it caused a system reliability problem and he had to install Windows 95 so many times on that machine every time he tried to fix it. And um, he memorized his product key. Now I memorized my Windows 98 product key several years ago 
because of how many times I've had to install it. All right, so, and you don't have to do this here with Linux. You only have to do it with Windows. All right, we got QDCMK and FKG 7V VGDW4, that's for memory. <laughs> Not memorized it. G Q G Q V Niner F M K nine B six. Now you didn't have to do this in Linux. You have to do this in Windows though. Now starting with Windows XP, you had to do the you had to put in your product act uh, your product key. And then you also had to go through product activation. And I think in like starting with Windows Vista and Windows 7, you have to do all that. Plus, you have to go through validation checks and all that. <clears throat> it's pretty annoying. Any plug and pray devices you might have. the right control button it releases your mouse and you can move this around yeah running it on Linux Mint I got the Quake 3 installer and I actually got the disc. I just haven't got around to putting it in there yet. How much uh, system resources? Yeah, see, I told you I got a six core processor. I'm running Linux Mint 15, latest version of Linux Mint. Uh, recording in high definition video, that's what this is about, uh, right there. And running Windows 98, the install process in a virtual machine, and still using less than a gigabyte of memory to do it. Compared to uh, <clears throat> Windows 7 and Windows 8, just for the 32 bit version, uh, they require. Um, uh, a gigabyte of RAM just to boot up and do nothing. Um, you know, if you want to do anything else, you're, you're going to have to um, you're going to have to have more memory than that. And then if you get the 64-bit versions uh, of Windows 7 or Windows 8, you're going to need two gigabytes of memory. Well, here I'm running the 64-bit version of Linux Mint, um, and it still requires only 512 megs of memory. As you can see, while up and running and running Windows in a virtual machine, while recording high definition video in Linux Mint 15, I'm still using less than a gig. You know? It's just, yeah, Windows is wasteful. And Linux is free also. Now, this down here, this just changed. Uh, this is your um, your update manager in Linux. All it does the whenever something changes the um, and updates and all that, it just it just changes the color of the icon or changes the icon. You know, you don't have ten different programs all screaming at you to be updated and all that. The update manager handles it itself.
system information. There we go. Yeah. AMD FX 6200 six core processor. Um, no, I just, okay, just about nearly a gig of memory used. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, the, my, Log, my Logitech C615 video camera works automatic, or a, a webcam works automatically in Linux. Just automatically without the need to configure or anything like that. Here we go. Linux uh, version 3.8.0-19 uh, uh, of the Linux kernel. This here means it's 64-bit, uh, compiled with symmetric multiprocessing. Um, been running for 35 minutes so far. Uh, processor. Some of the cores are clocked at, at uh, their lowest speed. Some of them are clocked at their maximum. It just depends on the, the CPU load that's needed. Um, but yeah, 64 bit. And. Um, Well, using less than a gigabyte of memory, according to this. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what's great about Linux. And what is taking so long with this Windows? Just reset the machine. There we go. Yeah, you gotta reset Windows several times. You know, I can run Linux in a virtual machine also. I'm not in the Pacific. Eastern Time. All right, apply that. Click OK. <laughs> I miss those days. Now for a Windows 98 machine, a 64 meg, um, 64 meg graphics card was really good. Matter of fact, even a, a 16 meg graphics card was still a nice gaming machine back then. Um, back when 98 second edition first released in early or sometime maybe in the spring of 99, uh, graphics cards usually only went up to uh, 32 megs of RAM, even for high-end gaming cards. It wasn't until the year 2000, whenever uh, 64 meg gaming graphics cards became available. I'm just gotta check on something real quick.
it looks like we're gonna have to do another reboot. Ah, genuine Microsoft. Don't you get tired of these reboots in Windows? And with Linux, here's how it is. You just uh, put in a uh, bootable disk or uh, some kind of bootable medium. Wow! You know what we? Genuine Microsoft. Um, you uh, you just install with Linux. You just uh, insert a bootable disk, um, boot from it, boot your operating system, and you're able to just play around with it and use it normally. The only thing is you can't save any changes because it's a read-only medium, like a like a like a DVD or a CD. And um, And, uh, and then you boot from it and then install it and then for whenever you want to and you got the option whenever the installation is finished you can cons you can continue using the live disk well we know the sound works um, you know with Linux you can continue using the live disk that you booted from for, for as long as you like or you can restart it and then boot from the hard drive, and that's the only time you have to restart. Mm. And this was supposed to be impressive. The thing is with with uh, Windows, you know, especially well, even in the days of Windows XP, you can count on Windows not having the the you know uh, not uh, having your drivers set up automatically. Sometimes you might get lucky and it might have it. Uh, in Linux, it's it's really common now uh, to have its drivers. Well, matter of fact, I mean, like in um, in, in Windows Seven. You know, a friend of mine, uh, when he installed Windows 7 on his machine, and that's not all that old. I mean, it's getting ready to be, well, it's getting ready to be four years old, but still, it, it's still regarded as current and all that, especially, well, a year ago, back before Windows 8 released, you know, Windows 7 was completely current. And then you install it on a new machine <clears throat> and, you know, um, or reinstalled on the machine it came with, and it didn't have your drivers. Uh, you, you still had to install the driver packages and all that and go through all this hell and try to get stuff to work. Um, discover Windows 98. Okay. Wow. So that don't work, even though the disk is in there. Maintain your computer. Whatever. Whatever. And close that. Now we got your start menu. And it was animated. Uh, in Windows 95, it wasn't. And everybody thought this was the big difference in Windows 95 and Windows uh, 98 was that it had an animated start menu. You know, there's the games it comes with. Let's see, there's what internet programs it comes or internet tools right there. You got Internet Explorer. So you got a web browser, a uh, email uh, client program. But you got all these online services. They're like trials or whatever, some stuff like that. Um, you get a CD player, uh, sound recorder. Um, you get um, oh, you, you gotta you gotta defrag your hard drive to keep it running good. Whereas in Linux, you don't have to do that because the file system manages and mitigates fragmentation itself um, in Linux, and and it has for a very very long time. Um, system monitor. 
Yeah, even in Windows, you have a kernel, so don't think that it's something unique only to Linux. Okay, so this, so Windows 98's not stressing this system very much. Um, So you've seen what few internet programs come in Windows. Well, what comes in Linux by default usually is your web browser, your instant messenger, um, yeah, an email program, a BitTorrent program comes in, uh, IRC client, and all that. Um, games, it didn't really have very many. Um, it came with a bunch of this Office software, LibreOffice, and all that. It just you get more for Linux and it's free. All right, shall we try to run a game? Now, um, you know, you're going to have to go through some driver stuff. Um, Well, let's see, should we run a DOS game or what? Um, something that's not going to really stress Windows very much. Because um, I don't have the, I don't have all the drivers. Now I think Windows 7 ran better in this. It was put in Duke Nukem 3D, which is a it was still a very popular game when uh Windows 98 released. <clears throat> there you go, it's detected. Yeah, program work to install, do Nukem 3D. Yeah, install to the C drive. Yeah, I'm gonna do that too. Yep. Try to get this graphics problem taken care of. Come on, Windows. Turbo, maybe that'll work. Oh, come on, like, gosh. Do you know what Microsoft? Now we gotta put the Windows disk back in. This was very annoying. Yeah, people that uh, think Windows is easier to use, people that think Windows is easier to use than Linux are the ones who never had to install Windows and have never had to set up Windows. 
you know, if all they know is what their experience is like when they first, you know, just buy their machine and, and it's all pre-installed, you know, that's where all the hard stuff is done for them. Um, they just don't know. Um, and that's the only way they know Windows is that, you know, um, is because it comes pre-installed on their computer all set up with stuff. Um, no, I don't want to use that one. Display list. We'll just say it's an ATI. Even though it's not. Written play will say it's that. Mm, yeah, whatever. I got the disc in. I, you dummy, I got the disc in there, you stupid dummy. Browse the drive, you talk. Well, go find it, dummy. That's what you're supposed to be for. Look, oh my gosh, I shouldn't have to point this to that. All right. Can, can like, oh my gosh. Mm hmm. All right, well, let's do something that it, that it possibly can do. Gosh, Windows is so stupid. Let's we'll just go with Matrox. Maybe that's Matrox. Uh, let us see. Matrox Millennium. Okay, maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah I know that because that, that's because you're being stupid. That's why. Okay, yeah, the disc has been in there, dummy. Mm okay, well, it's been in there, and you're supposed to be able to find it, but you know, you won't because you're Windows. Okay, Matrox. Okay, let's try looking here. Can I be... I chose it from the list. Come on, access. Okay, then maybe they'll find it. MGA LLX64. Now let's see if it's... Well, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can't, can't. Skip file, dummy. Come on. Cancel. Fuck. Three finger salute. End task. End task. Well, now we're going to shut down this machine here. Okay. That's, uh, <clears throat> you know, my install of Windows 98. I was trying to do XP, but I ended up trying Windows 98 in VirtualBox. Oh, gosh. You see how much of a headache Windows can be. All right. Well, that's that. And, um, eject that. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Sorry.
Uh, and this is why I use Linux because it's just installing software is just so much easier. Let's check out this. Okay, refresh. Is everything all good? Okay, we still got that problem. All right. So I'm going to conclude this video. And, uh,. Yeah, you know, hopefully I'll have some other better tutorials and videos for you all. So, uh, oh yeah, wine. Um, blood to. I set on maximum settings, didn't get it to run too well. Uh, uh, Half Life Opposing Forces. I got the demo just to test it. It ran great, um, even at maximum settings. Uh, Quake Four multiplayer demo. Um, well. It's a multiplayer demo, so I couldn't get it to run in single player that I, that I don't know how to do. But other than that, it ran fine. I mean, it does what it was designed to do. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, just to give you a little taste of this here. Okay. This DOS box. So press any key. This game is 21 years old. I mean, yeah, this game engine technology is regarded as being very substandard and inadequate now, but 20 years ago it was still good. And 21 years ago it was regarded as really good. Um, but the thing is, is the artwork, I, I like the artwork in it. This game looked. Thank you. 
Ah, you little punk. This was still a good game engine back in its day. Well, yeah. Uh, and those DOS box that I was just using, uh, DOS box emulator, it runs in Windows, Mac, Linux, and all that kind of stuff. It's really good. All right, I'm going to conclude this video. I got to start getting ready for work soon.